What's going on guys? Welcome to your next tutorial and what we're going to do in this tutorial is work with the functionality of the paddle, move it over with some rays and ray cast hits that we're familiar with a little bit and we're also going to work with the ball and uh, getting it to bounce properly because we're going to run into some problems once we actually set up our game. So let's just jump into it. We're going to create a new script for our paddle. So just right click JavaScript paddle is going to be the name of the script and let's double click that open that bad boy up and again it's pretty much the same as the menu uh, the menu uh, script that we created it's going to take a private variable that's going to be called array and it's going to be of the type array and also a private variable uh, that's going to be our hit again that's from the ray or ray cast hit and then all we're going to do within our update method is we have to set up what our ray actually is each time that the user clicks the button so we're gonna say ray is equal to again from the perspective of the camera dot main the main camera uh, screen point to ray exact same as we did previously and then we get the input dot mouse position and that's just setting up a ray now we want to check if a ray actually makes a collision with some sort of an object or some sort of a collider box that we're familiar with as well so we're going to set up another if statement we're going to relate to the physics class dot raycast and then we type in the two parameters which is our ray object and also our hit object and let's add some uh, inside our brackets here so now what we're going to do is each time we touch the screen we want to move the paddle just in the X position not in the Y position because then our paddle would move up on the screen if we touch like the center of the screen we just want to focus on the X positions of where our screen touch was and where the paddle X should be so we're just going to relate to the transform dot position uh, transform I'm sorry transform dot position dot x is going to be equal to our raycast hit which I'm sorry is our hit dot point dot x alright so when you're working with raycast hits uh, you can relate to the hit and use the point and that gives you the specific point on the screen the x and the y coordinates and then we can filter that out even more specifically by putting this point x here so it's pretty much like the transform of ray cast hits is what point stands for so that's how you set that up let's save this test it out and we're gonna run into some problems so let's grab our paddle script and we're gonna drag and drop that onto our paddle itself and run the game and we're gonna click and we aren't getting our paddle to move anywhere what's going on what's going on well what's happening is our rays aren't actually making a hit with anything with any colliders but if we click like for example over on this uh, this whatever this thing is a wall or on this wall it's gonna move our paddle as well so that's kind of weird that's kind of bizarre that's not exactly what we want because it's only gonna move the paddle each time it hits a object as you can see here this ball um, so you know that's not exactly what we want so we want to be able to click anywhere on the screen and have it be a hit have our ray hit something no matter what and how we're gonna do that is with uh, with adding a, another object behind our whole you know setup that we got going on here kind of like in the background so any place that we could click on the screen is going to be an automatic hit no matter what it's hitting our background object so let's go up to our objects or game object create other and we're just going to create a plane here and we're going to rotate or we're going to set this plane position to be zero 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 and we're going to rotate it uh, by hitting by hitting e and then dragging this guy up here or you can just do a negative rotation of negative 90 or positive 90 probably the same thing let's scale this guy up so it fills up our whole screen so we're gonna do R on our pad and just expand this out a bit now if you look from a different perspective it looks like our our, uh, our plane is on the same level as all of our other game objects we probably want to move it back a little bit since our camera is in the negative Z position Maybe we should move our plane to like a negative 10, or I'm sorry, a positive 10 or a positive 5. Something to give it a little bit of distance. Um, so you can either type it out in the inspector, or we can do our uh, W and just drag this guy back here in the Z position. But in our game view, 
it obviously looks kind of messed up so what we're also gonna have to do is add some sort of a texture to this background so let's go up to our game or assets folder I'm sorry our assets tab and we're gonna go down to import package standard assets for mobile and it's gonna bring in a lot of stuff a lot of stuff that we probably won't use in this tutorial series but it has some some um, some materials and stuff that we're going to use so don't uncheck any of them because it doesn't really matter for a tutorial series but if you're launching a game you probably don't want to include assets you aren't going to use so you could filter these out later for your own game but but as for now everything's fine so let's scroll down open up this assets folder mobile and we're going to grab the grid or the grid for 2d or the skybox whatever material that you guys want to use we're going to grab this after we have our plane selected and we're just going to grab this guy and drop it into our mesh renderer into the materials it might not be expanded like it is here so you can drop it pretty much anywhere and look at that our game is already looking pretty epic and uh, now also this is a game object this plane has a mesh collider so any touch event that we're going to create is going to be true so when we run this game we can touch like right here or over here anywhere pretty much and oh I must have messed up right now guys uh, I just noticed this I'm not clicking any buttons and it's moving already uh, so that's something a little bit new and uh, wasn't meant for this tutorial let's go back to our scripts for the paddle and for the paddle and so essentially we're always updating this it's always gonna be true and then we're always gonna check our hit value and before what we did is we created another if statement that I forgot my bad my bad my bad uh, so let's just create this if statement real quickly and again this comes from the input class dot get mouse button uh, down is what we're familiar with and now again is the left click for that and then we're going to create our bracket here and close off our bracket uh, our bracket down here uh, sorry the formats kind of messed up but uh, that's the essential way that we set up our other our other uh, mouse input that we've used so far with our menu class but now there, we're gonna have another problem with this paddle because if we run our game it's only gonna move once we click and it's not gonna be moving when we click and drag so what we're gonna have to do is go back and we're gonna change this from get mouse button down to just get mouse button so it's still gonna be the same concept but it's only going to be true when we actually click the left most, uh, mouse button down um, when we run our game. Again, you can not include this, and it would just kind of follow along wherever. Uh, probably won't be great for you know iPhone or Android or anything like that. But for web development, it could work. Just moving the mouse around. Uh, so let's save this and run it, and I'll show you guys the difference. You probably already expect it. Um, so obviously it's not following my my cursor right now like it was the first time and when we click before it would just stay there but I can click and hold down and it will follow me along uh, no matter where I go in the screen and again this is why we only define the X position because if we would have defined the Y position it would have been right on my cursor as you can see and that's that's not how this game works so um, that's why we only define the X position you guys probably figured that out because you're pretty smart and uh, and we got our paddle working so that's incredible right but let's work with our ball now because we're gonna have some other difficulties with our ball so let's jump into our ball script and change some things around as well uh, what we want is actually a you know X position and a Y position within the wake method so we're gonna refer to the rigid body as well and dot velocity dot Y we're gonna set this to be like 10 or something and let's just save this and run it and see what happens and we run this and as you can see it kinda looks like our ball is somewhat slowing down in the overall velocity which isn't what we want and it actually kinda does some weird bouncing here and then just goes back and forth back and forth so the tutorial is getting kinda long so I'm probably just gonna cut it here and in the next tutorial we'll solve all of the ball problems and it's going to be pretty awesome. So I will catch you guys in, and I hope you have a great day, and we'll uh, see you later. All you got to do to support free education is click that subscribe button.